Um, all right, everybody. Jing FC family. Um, let's see if we're getting together here for uh, this presentation. Um, just want to make sure we we are up and rolling. Um, something new for us, of course. Since COVID, we haven't done. And just trying to make sure we get everything set here. Um, hold on one second. All right, guys, so um, good evening. I know it's a cold day. I know most of our teams are still practicing outside um, in a cold weather. We have done this presentation a couple years before, right before uh, COVID hit us. It was actually a couple days before, and uh, I think it was very productive um, on our side as a club, as coaches, as uh, players, parents, just to put everybody on the same page. Uh, this year, we want to do the presentation live in person, uh, but we decided to do this live uh, on YouTube. Again, it was hard for me to learn, but we um, hopefully we get the message and put everybody on the same page with the plans for the spring, you know, what's happening in the spring uh, and why we're doing this, of course, uh, with, the, with the players and how we're developing and uh, of course, start planning our next season already for next year. So hopefully you enjoy. I'll put a little presentation here. We'll try to go as be informative, but not boring and try to go quick with some important information. And again, if you have any questions, um, you can reach out through your manager with an email. You can come straight to me and we can get back to you um, as soon as possible with some answers. Uh, of course, we are happy um, and glad you are with us in the club. Uh, I know there's other options out there, but we, as a club, we want to offer the best option for your son and your daughter to develop, enjoy the game, and achieve their goals. So that's kind of what we're going to go through in the presentation. I will share my screen here, and hopefully um, you'll be able to see. I have Jessica and Louise and some other coaches watching as well. So if you see me looking on the phone, it's because they give me some uh, signal to make sure we're doing um, well and you guys are seeing and understanding the, the, um, the presentation. All right, so I'll, I'll share my screen. Again, thank you for uh, coming. If you're in the car watching your son and your daughter practicing, enjoy too. Uh, it's cold, cold out there. And yesterday we had to cancel, but today we decided to go through this weekend will be our first game, so we need to uh, get ready. Um, so on my screen, let me see if I if I do it right. Um, hold down one second, because I might, I might have to go back for one second so we can see this uh, presentation better. Um, Yeah, so I, why I try to fix this, guys. So listen, um, the Jenga Football Club, I'm just going to give a little history on the, on the Jenga FC, why I try to figure this out and have you guys um, seen the presentation so I can go through the, the, um, through the process here. One second. Um, all right, let me see if it does work. Uh, Luis, this work for you, uh, for everybody? Uh, I know you guys are in the message uh, and you can see it from there. Hold on one second, guys. So 
All right, thanks, Jessica. So, uh, Jingo Football Club, our 2022-2023 season, uh, just again putting us on the same page on this spring, and then of course going forward with some changes uh, from two years ago, because there are different leagues, different options for our players. Uh, more players playing college and moving to the next level, which make us proud to get to, um, you know, to to find a, a pathway for our players to um, to get to the next level. So, Jinga Football Club, of course, our you know our center of the attention is is our players, you know, and our main, especially for me uh, as an owner, as you know, um, a leader on the on the on the club. We want to develop uh, and foster all players to enjoy the game. I think it's number one. Their goals is they got to fall in love for soccer. Uh, they got to enjoy being with their friends. They got to enjoy develop. They got to be enjoying the competition. You know, they got to enjoy their coaches. They got to enjoy the whole environment. So we want to um, control that environment in the best way. Of course, is not always a hundred percent right, but in give them experience, you know, or enjoy the environment so they can develop uh, and keep that passion of, uh, of the game. Uh, of course, we have the long-term development. Um, so it's not, it doesn't happen, you know, one season, two seasons is a long way, especially the players that start with us in an early age and um, go to the, you know, to the high school and uh, college. You know, this way to keep them motivated is meaning uh, challenge and fun practices, uh, we focus a lot at GFC on the technical ability and decision making, especially when we do the small sides in futsal. And of course, it's very important for us the experience that they will follow for their whole life. Um, we're calling out the Jinga times. Uh, we had few few teams going to tournaments, showcases this past few weeks, and seeing the videos uh, that coaches and parents were sharing, not only on the field but off the field, is very important for uh, for our club to offer our players with that. Uh, individual plans, and we go over all this uh, to, to each player. Everybody's a little different and deserves um, a different plan, you know, where they play positions and, you know, so uh, our coaching staff, uh, passionate, uh, family, um, again, all those coaches that we have on the club, I trust them with my own son and my daughter. So I think this is a big, um, a big plus. You know, you're in a safe spot, in a safe place where the coaches are passionate to teach your son and your daughter. Um, performance, of course, high school scenario, college, you know, even competitions uh, on a young age, that's very uh, important as well, but it has to be controlled so it doesn't go over overboard. And then support of the players for next um, next level, where they want to go. You know, um, I think a couple of weeks ago we had a good talk and even on social media, about what the players need uh, to achieve their goals. You know, I think the first thing is for them to dream, uh, to dream, to have goals to achieve and practice for. So this is very important for us to um, shelter that so the players can um, get where they want and everybody's different. You know, um, that's a part of why we do what we do. Uh, I think we love the game and passionate for the game and we want those players to enjoy as well. Uh, the core values that we're looking for is the passion, respect, aspiration, integrity, and togetherness. You know, the team concept is very important. Um, Jinga, FC, Jinga Football Club, so Jinga means rhythm. Uh, Jinga, if you say in Brazil, you got Jinga, you got skills. And, you know, we're establishing 2013, where was the first, first year as a Jinga FC club, and, I think we're getting to be known in the college world with our players moving up high school is that if they play a Jenga, they have their skills, they have the creativity, um, they got Jenga. So this is very, um, very important and, and our philosophy to get um, the opposite from boring. And you'll see on our lesson plans how we differentiate from other clubs uh, on that. Uh, the club structure, you know, if you see here, <clears throat> the player is in the center. So we have everybody around the players developing a plan or develop, controlling the environment where the player could um, develop and enjoy uh, their uh, their pathway, you know, their, their experience of playing soccer. Um, and I'll introduce all this, talk a little bit quickly about each one of us that 
uh, needs to do our part, our role, so the players can uh, develop to the the best. You know, administ administrative it will be you know Coach Rodrigo, uh, Jessica, myself, all the paperwork done, uh, kind of the fields, you know, things that we need the players to um, you know providing our players with the best atmosphere for them to enjoy. You know, director of coaching is Coach Rodrigo right now. He's directing our coaches with lesson plans, with even some struggles that they have with uh, developing a team without forgetting players. Uh, so I'll introduce Rodrigo as well. Um, so consultants, uh, we are looking for more and introducing them to our club so they can bring some... Uh, some different aspects to to the players and to the club. Our parents, very important. Um, the participation of the parents, understanding where we're coming from and supporting our coaches, our club, our managers to deliver the best option for the players. So again, parents, you're very, uh, you're a big, big part of this, uh, this plan. Uh, team managers, uh, our team managers are the, the ones that are controlling kind of, you know, overseeing the, the teams on the communication, letting us know what could be done better. Uh, again, the team manager are the communication between or the piece or the you know, communication between coaches and parents. So parents can get the quickest, you know, quick response to their, their questions. Uh, us coaches, of course, we have more teams. So it, it sometimes it's hard to answer all the questions right away. Going through the managers will be the best way. Um, and our coaching staff, which is the most important, I think, delivering uh, the message, having one-on-one -on -one relationship with the players um, and being the role models for our players. So this is kind of our club structure right now. Um, talking about the players right away, which is our main factor that, you know, what we're doing this. Um, and we keep, we keep touching that long-term athlete development because it's not... For me, for the players, it's not a sprint, it's, it's a marathon. Uh, it's a long way. Um, you're gonna see some up and downs on players' development that we need to shelter because they're gonna be very, they are, um, if once they fall in love for the game, we need to protect them because they're not gonna be playing uh, their top level all the time. So it's gonna be ups and downs. And I'll show in the graphic here a little bit. Um, and everybody develop a little different. So we talk about here the physical literacy. Everybody develops a little different. They need to develop upper body, lower body. Um, and you see on those teams, especially when they get to 12, 13, 14 years old, the difference on the size, on the speed, uh, especially when they hit that, that growth spur, especially the boys and girls, you know, uh, it, it's totally different. So that could motivate players and could you know, go the other way, kind of, you know, the players start losing a little interest. So that's what we got to be very careful uh, on a way that we present this to the players so they don't lose interest, they don't lose the love for the game, they keep practicing, and they understand what's what they're going through. You know, age, trainability, the windows, and I'll show uh, on this graphic right here, you see the difference um, of females and males. Uh, I know it's a little too small. I don't know if I can move it up, but, you know, everybody's de uh, develops a little different, especially the, you know, the girls. If you compare the girls and the boys, the girls are developing much quicker. Uh, we're boys, we're a slow developer, uh, especially physically. Um, we have some scrimmages happening on our club between boys and girls at age 10, 11, 12, even 13. When they get to 14, 15, uh, that's when the boys kind of hit that growth spur and then it's hard to compete. So this is very important uh, for our lesson plans because you don't want to develop, you know, uh, a speed and a young age because what they're getting right there, if you see in the graphs, is the skills. Uh, so you see some of our lesson plans being more skill-based and less running at certain ages because uh, that's not the peak that they have. You know, they're not getting the most on that age. And then you see in different ages where we, um, we're we focusing more on running. I know the old seven girls and some of the girls are running a mile, uh, now preparing them to high school because now the stamina that they need is it, it, it's, it's a peak. So they will, they'll get a lot of this, you know. So our job excellence, 
uh, takes time. You know, uh, we got to nurture the talent. Uh, coaches, we're trying to improve our coaching staff and coaching ability with courses and, you know, meetings. We do meetings every uh, Monday morning where we, you know, we're, we're talking a little bit more about uh, the practices and following what Coach Rodrigo has been putting together. So um, the competition right here is very important in each stage that we have. Uh, you don't want to compete too much in an early age because every game that a player goes to, uh, for us, we think it's just in a game, but emotional, uh, everything that goes in their head, it's, uh, it could have a negative effect, especially when they grow older. We don't want our eight-year-old playing 25 games and pressure and everybody yelling because we know when they get to 14 years, so they might not have interest. They might not want to play um, the game. So we, it's very important for us to keep our players hungry and uh, excited to improve and to to compete. Uh, and then, uh, and that is that's the hardest part. The expectation that we have, you know, work hard and you're going to get better. You're going to succeed. But eventually, you know, the hard work. There's problems. There's you know injuries. There's growth problems. They're going to fail. And for me, this is the most important sport because our kids are going to have this in a, in a real life. So the problem is the hardworking, you know, talking to the coach. Maybe they didn't play as much. Maybe they are uh, playing different positions, not the position that they expect first. Uh, but they got to keep they got to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel to the success. So this is a big part on us parents, you know, I'm including myself because I have two kids in the program and I can see them getting better and then they go down. And so this is very important for us to keep, um, keep, them, um, keep them interested in playing the game. So our foundation here uh, of the coaching staff, um, you know, administrative group is myself, uh, Isabella, Jessica, uh, Rodrigo, and Dave Bell, who does our scheduling, which has the toughest part. Him and Rodrigo probably had this toughest um, job you know, one to put the schedule together to make everybody happy, other clubs, and Rodrigo to kind of uh, lead our coaches. Uh, JB is the player director. We're dealing one-on-one -on -one with players uh, on that developmental that's going too fast or going too slow, you know, keep them motivated and give them plans as well. Uh, Coach Leo does the extra training for us on Friday, which we've been using the Pelada with the you know, scrimmages where the kids come and play and compete. Uh, it's been very well. We're starting this, I think, the first week in, um, not this Friday because we have the pizza party, but the following Friday we start already with the extra training. Uh, and Coach Russo now is our director of speed and agility, of speed and conditioning, uh, strength and conditioning. And he's done a great job the past couple of Fridays, a lot of great um, feedback. And it's something that we need to do separate from our training session is to work on their strength and uh, speed. So Russo has done a great job, um, a lot of great feedback on this past couple of weeks it did. And then you see Coach Lucas, Coach Tiago, Coach Jen, Jess, Mateus, Coach Wilson, Coach Felipe. This is our, um, our group and our leaders to our players. Uh, you know, parents here, enjoy the ride. Um, enjoy your kids playing. It's so fast, and I, I'm, I'm enjoying as much because I'm on the field as well, coaching my own kids, and it's it goes fast. I can see them growing now, uh, and we gotta do everything to make this an enjoyable. Um, yeah, again, it doesn't matter who you play for, what sport for, but enjoy it because pretty soon I think we'll, you know, our kids are getting older. We're gonna be missing. Uh, you know, the rides going to practices, the competition, the, the tournaments. So let's enjoy. Um, if you are concerned about a developmental on your your son and your daughter as a player, you know, we it's our job to kind of do that. So reach out to your coach, uh, coach JB, who can help out. Uh, we need the communication, you know. We need a clear communication between parents and coaches because we don't know what's going on at home. We don't know what's going on with each player. And if we know a little bit, we can help. So it may be self-confidence. It may be, you know, a little a little praise from the coach will go a long way uh, for that player. Um, and of course we have um, the code of conduct for parents, uh, managers, players, coach, all on a website. So you guys can take a look as well. Uh, again, I think, 
it would be great if we had all 100 you know percent perfect and move forward but it's going to be some bumps there so more we can talk and clear you know respect the communication would be great uh this is something that we put the 10 rules um for our players you know do not yell at me in public do not yell at the coach do not appreciate the referee do not appreciate my teammates or opponents keep calm laugh and have fun watching me play do not give me lessons after the game uh this is so hard of course you know but i think they those players when they step on the field boys and girls they want to give the best i haven't seen anyone they have tough days but they always put their best there sometimes their best is not what we adults expect but you know it's us criticizing the players, uh, there's a negative effect big time. We all know this, but we now we all are guilty about it because it's hard to hold back. But uh, remember that just a game. Remember, I'll do my best, the best that I can. And with the support, we'll be happy. I'll be happy. You know, I think they need that support. Uh, team managers, I'll go a little quicker here because the, the communication between the managers and um, the parents and the coaches should be smooth um so talk to your team managers if for some reason it's not getting a the, your question across then you can reach out to rodrigo he's at the office on monday and tuesday or jess but um there's a lot of questions that <clears throat> sometimes parents think the managers is on the coaching staff and they make decisions and it's totally the opposite you know their kids play on the club but is the coach's decisions and He's the one that brings the message between the players and um, the parents and the coaches. It is very important when you have a good team manager, especially when you go to the tournaments, organize uh, events with the teams. So this is kind of uh, our team manager's job, and it's we appreciate every single team manager, uh, the time that they put in for the club and for our players. And, you know, I think if you're – paid by hour would go broke so i know you put a lot of work and uh, we we really appreciate it um you know the consultants that we're saying we want to do more nutrition psychologists uh, college athletes speaking so you you probably see more um more of those coming up uh we had in the past some events where we brought douglas costa from juventus at the time we brought falcon the futsal um it's players that inspire our kids to play and develop. And we'll see more of this coming up. So um, the fields, you know, we have add more fields to the um, to our to our club. Of course, we do not have a place where we can call home yet, uh, but it's probably on their way and we would love to have one. But right now we're so fortunate to have, of course, our indoor complex in Woodbridge um hamden has helped us so much with the fields uh but hamden hall where i think few few teams started today already practicing there um already notre dame where we have a good relationship with the high school where coach tiago is one of their coaches uh peace road in woodbridge uh, sacred heart academy will be using their fields because i'm coaching there now uh and sportsplex in north haven so uh we're trying to get the best fields for our players to showcase their skills that they're learning. So uh, I can say that it's been getting better and better, uh, especially after COVID when we were stuck in a couple of fields that um, it were not appropriate for the players due to uh, different uh, different rules that they put it together. But Coach Rodrigo here, he has uh, 10 years experience, you know, playing Brazil all over the place. Um, uh, has experience of a player. Uh, in the picture here, we are together in 1998, I think. We we grew up together and playing. Uh, this is kind of like something that I always tell to our players. You know, your friends here will be forever, you know, on the soccer field. So it's, you know, enjoy. You know, we're not competing against each other. We're competing together. It's, you know, and a big example is Rodrigo and I. Uh, again, we work together now. We, our families are close. And it's someone that brings a lot of knowledge to the club. Uh, he's an A-licensed um, coach, so he's able, he went to school for that. Uh, so he's able to develop the lesson plans with us, with our coaching staff to deliver to our players. So here's some pictures of him, uh, the weekly communication that we do, the training. Um, we've been using a lot of uh, Zoom calls now uh, because 
a lot of our coaches are working during the day, uh, but we've been in touch every week doing the lesson plans. So it's not that we're showing up and doing doing the training. Uh, there is a, a, a guide is from uh, Coach Rodrigo there and us. So um, the training methodology, you know, I think Rodrigo breaks down on 77, 99, and 11 v 11. Coaches talk about, you know, the... Um, you know, if your team is doing really well, you've got to modify your training sessions, push them a little bit if they're developing. But this is an example of what Coach Rodrigo sent to our coaches. Uh, this will be playing out of the back. And here's the drawings. And there's a video that, that they can watch. So, again, there's a there's a, there's a a rule. There's a, um, you know, there's a room for the coaches to change a little bit because of the levels of each team, but there's a guidance where they're working on, uh, especially now that we're outside, we have more space for uh, some tactical work as well. Uh, the club philosophy, uh, to build a strong and passionate soccer community. I think that's since day one with Everson Soccer. When we started in 2005, uh, that's been our, that's been my goal, uh, is to pass the passion for our players for the game doesn't matter if they're playing high school they're playing college they're playing professional uh we want our players to enjoy the game uh so when they are 40 50 years old they're still playing the game with their friends uh and enjoying again their goal should be playing soccer and enjoy and of course the dreams that they have will come true you know if they want to play in high school college or professional this will come it's not pushing it's going through a easy process where they get there, you know, uh, so it's not, you know, and of course, at a certain age, the players will make that decision, you know, not us coaches, parents, but we want to expose them to, um, to everything that they can so they can develop. Um, the coaching holistic uh, uh, and systemat systemic approach where we are teaching our players, not telling them what to do all the time, uh, guided guided discovery, intensity and quality on the training session. So sometimes we think about quantity against quality. You know, I think the quality games, the quality tournaments, the quality training, it's more than just throwing the ball and playing and um, getting the bad habits. Um, of course, we have the sports science um, support. Coach Luis that has, I sent out an email a couple of weeks ago, we're introducing Coach Luis to our um, our staff, and he's been a very supportive uh, tool for us because of his background uh, on developing players back in Brazil and even working professional players with Harf Athletics and other clubs. Uh, and then the long-term player development and individual player uh, development. Uh, and again, player-centered, um, where our players being happy, understanding the game, understanding the process um, will make everything easier for you to, um, to improve and to enjoy. Uh, the training methodology, I think this is one um, biggest, I'll say the biggest difference in our club uh, with the ball mastery. Every younger player, uh, it's going through a ball mastery process uh, with the three cone drill, with this foot skills, uh, first touch, passing, movement, uh, and they are um, they good. Um, they good with the ball. Every player that we have playing again in high school, in college, the coaches have been giving us some great feedback, and because they their ball is their best friend, you know, they they know what to do with uh, the ball, and that's the, one of the big difference on us. The focus on ball mastery that we have in our club in their younger age. And moving to the next one is the 1v1 skills. We want players to take 1v1 players, especially in a young age. Um, of course, we don't want them to do too much, but we want to encourage them to, to take people on. If you think about the best players in the world, they are very good 1v1. Um, it's, you know, 1v1 skills. They take players on, they break the lines when we call the break line on defense because they have those skills. Uh, and this, if we don't teach them at a young age, encourage them to do it, it will struggle um, on the older age. So we do this before passing and receiving. Uh, it's our focus a little more. 
and other clubs, of course, is working on pass and receiving and not letting the players do that 1v1. So I think it's the, the biggest difference on developmental on our club is the 1v1. is is kind of the Brazilian style, the Brazilian methodology that we adopted. Uh, and then speed and then team tactics. Uh, and if you see here on the side, the futsal games, you know, it's very important in every coaching license that I did, every academy that I went watch, I've been at Juventus, I've been at AC Milan, I've been at uh, Bayern Munich uh, and others even in the U.S. The focus is small side games. So we see our teams come in the spring strong technically and skill-wise because we're doing the small side games at the complex. Uh, and the quick decisions is passing. Of course, when we go back now to the bigger field, we struggle to adapt to the bigger fields, but their skills and their touches, the understanding of the game right there, it's, um, it's tremendous. And this is due to futsal and to the small side of games that we do it. And again, I, I mentioned the futsal. It's, um, you know, what futsal brings to our players. There's a ton of, you know, you can't name that. You can't, you know, you can't compare it to other practices. Uh, and again, I say the futsal, but it's small side games that we've been doing at the, comp at the complex during the winter when we have limited space. Uh, and this is like, we can even use the tactical uh, principles on that short space, players rotation, you know, the movement, unpredictability. So in the unpredictable and what they do, call for intelligence because they got to think quick, game moments, uh, self-organization, they got to organize quickly on the field, uh, situation techniques. So they're using the techniques under pressure, uh, intense defending, organization, dynamism. So they keep moving and communication. So that's just to name some of the, um, of the, um, the benefits of having the small side games and the futsal in our lesson plans, especially in the winter. I'm sorry, I got a little stuck here now. Um, all right, so Jing FC player, what the player, how we want to develop our player uh, on the tactical, you know, game understanding, quality decision making. Uh, spatial awareness, so there's spacing. I thought this was spelled wrong, but I guess it's right. Um, so they know the spacing that they're using on the field uh, in the positions that they want. The versatility in playing different positions in autonomy, we're calling them, you know, having their auto, you know, the, the self-esteem, the self-confidence to do stuff. Uh, psychological competitiveness, training quality, <clears throat> emotional control. Greed and resilience in being a team player. That's a big one. So we'll see our players, especially at certain age where we have the two teams. We want those teams, if they play on, you know, we're called the gold and the blue. We want the players just playing, enjoying, being a team player every time they step on the field. Um, the technical, which is, I think, is the most important for us, the quality, the creativity, the 1v1, efficiency and using both feet. Uh, the physical quickness, intensity, endurance, hard to be and functional. Um, and I'll put here hard workers. I think all the players that we have moving on, uh, coming from Jig, hard work players, hard work, um, you know, uh, young men and young women. Uh, this um, is something that we've been sharing with the players. We haven't done yet, and Luis has developed this for us is where the kids are giving their, um, setting their goals, setting their, you know, long-term goals. Uh, we need to, we did in a piece of paper. Now we're going to have a form coming along in the next few weeks where the players will share with us what they have on their heads, you know, how they want to, um, you know, how they want to develop, how they, what they want to get, what's their strengths and what's their weaknesses. And I guarantee you, they are 95, 99% right on what they write, and we can guide them through <clears throat> to break, you know, on those low self-esteem that they have or the problems or the weaknesses for them to get better. Uh, and again, us telling them always what, what, they, what they have to do, sometimes I don't think we're that accurate. So getting a feedback from them and having that player development plan coming from the players will be a big... Um, a big improvement for us in uh, reaching those goals. So this you see coming along uh, pretty pretty quick. 
Uh, here's the pathway that we have to success that I, a lot of players have been getting to the, the top, you know, in the college. We see more players going to the college level now. Uh, but this, we start, most of our players start in our camps, clinics, and then go to the UA, U9 and U10, um, development program, high performance, making that transition to high school and to the excellence program, which there will, will be a pathway for them to go to college um, or to finish it up as strong with their youth, the youth uh, career uh, with soccer. So here's their girls pathway. It differs a little bit from the boys, but not as much. Uh, but we have the introduction on the UA, which is the physical literacy. They're learning their bodies, the team environment, game situation. Uh, very low key for our UA boys and girls. Again, a competition. We don't want to put them into too much competition right away because we'll have a negative effect in the long run. Uh, nurture the skills when they get you nine, problem solving tools, competition as fun and challenge environment. So they, they start competing a little more. There's more games, there's a couple tournaments there, but again, very fun. Uh, they can't lose the fun. Uh, and again, it's our job to find the best, the best scenario for them to compete. They don't wanna win by 10-0 or they don't wanna lose by 10-0. And doesn't mean if they lose in 10 0 in a long run and be a strong team. So it's kind of our job to find the best for them to develop. Uh, <clears throat> as a U11, U12, and again, those two groups, you start seeing we forming two teams, you know, because we need to develop more players, <clears throat> one, and players are in different levels. You know, they are, they need different environments to develop. I use my own son and my daughter and as example all the time because they are <clears throat> not ready or they weren't ready to compete on the top is level, but they need a level where they succeed and they improve. And that has happened tremendous where they, <clears throat> they make that improvement and maybe not, you know, on the right time. So we got to respect that when those players are developing physically, emotional, and, you know, skills and everything. But uh, development um, program right there, teams first mentality, more complex contests. We started seeing a 9v9 game here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they started studying the game a little more. Where <clears throat> you see, I'm sorry where you see them um, understanding the positions. Now we are putting a 3-4-1. We are putting a 2-5-1 for them to understand the game a little more. So you're seeing them competing a little more. As a U11, you start getting points for God Soccer, God Sport now, which will carry for the team um, if you're not on the age, but you see they're ranked in the state and ranked nationally. Uh, they only accept to some tournaments if they hire high rank, you know, higher ranked uh, team. So you see them competing a little more, uh, especially on the U12, because that's a pre-national league, which we follow up uh, on the high performance. Uh, the high performance, again, 11 v 11 game. That's those transitions from 7 v 7, 9 v 9 and 11 v 11 are very important because a player could be very successful on a 7 v 7 and not as successful on 9v9 or 11v11 because the field gets bigger. Uh, the whole chemistry, the whole game changes a little. So we have to respect and uh, and kind of respect the, the transition because they could be playing as a forward on a 9v9, but on the 11v11, he might be a defender or she might be a defender. So that's the game changes a lot uh, on those transitions. So it's very important. And of course, the excellence, it's our goals within the sports. Uh, some want to play in college, some want to uh, stay more local and play uh, just in high school or play club soccer in college. Uh, but this is our excellent. They, they're ready to compete now, and we need to showcase their skills on some good tournaments uh, out there. Here are the boy path, boys' pathways. Uh, same thing, so I'll jump in quickly. Um, of course, you got to respect their development, different from the girls and the girls from the boys' uh, transition. So the transition is squad, <clears throat> like I said, we have recognized that um, the importance on those uh, transitions. So our 7v7 to 9v9, you see something coming new this season where we're going to offer the players 
an extra training or a couple extra trainings, uh, extra games. So they are ahead of the game. Um, you know, on the 77 right now, I think, I believe it's our 2012 boys and 2012 girls. Next year, they'll be playing 99. Um, and same thing for our 2010 boys, 2010 girls, they are playing 9v9 and they're going to jump in into 11v11. So we want to get those kids together, maybe with their coach, the regular coach now, or with a different coach, myself or someone. Um, cause that's that transition. It, it, a lot of people don't see, but again, you involve more players. So some are not playing together because we have the gold and blue. So when you have 7 v 7, you might have 10 players. And when a 9 v 9, you go to 13, 14 players. So now you got to see that transition, put in your head for the following year uh, and get the players ready to compete. Uh, so a couple extra practices, few extra sessions and a couple extra games will give them that chance to be ahead of the game and make that transition smooth. Again, it will sometimes it could be hurt. Uh, it could hurt our players' mentality, and uh, especially if they don't see that big picture uh, moving forward. So you'll see this coming along, especially the 2012 boys and girls, 2010 boys and girls. 2010 boys has done a lot. Uh, that was kind of our our experiment uh, team to do so, and they're doing really well with that transition. Um, our league, uh, this is important. Again, um, a lot of people takes you put too much attention on the league that they play for or um, and forget to train and forget to get better. For me, I always, it doesn't matter where you play. If you're good enough, people find you. Uh, people talk about you. But EDP has put something very, very nice together um, that it goes along with all the, the states and there's a chance for our teams to make to the national. Uh, we we are fortunate to have our 2007 girls that went through the process, the qualification. So the process is if you're in a young age, you are playing in an EDP or the NECSL, UA, sorry, UA now, UA doesn't have a league, U9, U10, um, U11, U12. Now, as they're getting older, you start seeing the teams they are doing well going to some leagues and the teams they are not doing that well going down the qualification so they can go. Once they win their EDP or their NECSL as a U12, they qualify to the National League uh, where the New England, uh, so then we'll play the New England teams, which are teams from Mass, um, Rhode Island, um, not many New York teams in that league and not much traveling, but you have few traveling um, field trips for the, the players, which is manageable. But after they play the National League, if they are finishing first, or if they win their State Cup, uh, which they start playing U12 and up, they'll qualify to the Pro League. So this is the new league that took place this past, this year is taking place, where 48 clubs uh, from the nation get together in Florida for, um, six games and then you play a local game so uh the 2007 girls went to orlando uh and played three games uh, at espn um espn um uh, complex there beautiful very professional best teams in the country and then this is back in december and then in february we went to tampa and played three more games um and then we play a local game, which is a couple of weeks ago against the top, the best team in the country. We ended up tying, but the girls qualify to the nationals now. So out of seven games, you have a group of eight. The top two in that group qualify to the nationals. Uh, out of the five five groups or six groups, 12, 12 teams will go down for the national. And if you win your state cup, you play the regional, which is down in West Virginia this year, which is the best teams in the region uh, that won the state cup. If you win that, you go to the same route for the nationals. Uh, so this is neat because you see the rankings and you see the players and the exposure that they, they have on those tournaments are amazing for college and, uh, and it's fun as well. Um, and the pro, that's the, the meaning of the pro that they put together is the player recruitment opportunity and all those games that we play down in Tampa and um, 
Orlando, we had a ton of uh, college coaches watching. They they contract pro soccer, which is a scouting um, company from England, where they did all the scouting, all the players, uh, and shared that with all those coaches that are registered for the, that tournament. So our players, you know, we would love to get more teams there. Uh, for the exposure that they have. This is not the only exposure they have because the local tournaments as well have the same effects, but this is something neat that they put together to compete against some big um, big leagues out there. Um, you know, the competitive experience that we had there, 35 colleges registered to scout Jenga games. The, you can see that who is coming to watch uh, our games. Again, those girls are all freshmen uh, in high school. Um, 185 colleges plus two professional clubs registered to scout NL Pro season on the men's side. So our boys, you are exposed there as well. Uh, 235 colleges registered to scout NL Pro uh, season in women. Uh, so you can see there the numbers are very similar, but the girls have more. Um, and the partnership that I said was uh, Pro Score. I didn't see Pro Soccer, it's Pro Score, Stat Sports, and the SCA. Um, and it was amazing uh, the exposure that the girls had. It. Um, there's a little, a little bit of video, but I'll skip this on what they had. Um, actually, you can watch. It's only a minute. Playing in the National League helps me because obviously there's coaches watching all around, so we get exposure to them, and they get exposure to us as a player. And then us playing against other players with high aspirations as well just show us our level is high. The competition at the National League. Is Top notch. I've seen girls that are amazing players, so it's nice to come out here and see good soccer. And with the National League, it's nice to have something that they're fighting for because when they make it to the college level, they're fighting for a conference championship and then a national championship. So it's very college like because they have to fight in order to win. I think this is a really good exposure for me because personally, I do want to go D1 for college. And I feel like this will give me good chances and opportunities to get scouted and maybe go to one of the schools I'm looking at. At the end of the day, right, we're trying to get kids to the next level. Our role is to get players up to the next step. So without the competition, it's hard for us to showcase our players where coaches can go, oh, you know, a bit of adversity. How do they react? How do they deal? It can showcase the players in a way that the coaches want to see. So this, uh, the video, of course, uh, the exposure is out there um, for our players. They are getting to that level where I want to play. Uh, and again, I, I don't agree with um, one of the young girls said, that, you know, I want to go to D1 or D2. Uh, and we, we did a whole presentation on that for our um, high school players. Um, you know, D1, D2, D3 doesn't mean uh, a lot. You know, you have a lot of D3 teams are better than D1 or D2 or better environment for, for them. So our players that want to play in college, they should, um, on the right age, understand where they want to go to school and learning about the programs as well, because you don't want to go, you don't want to grow up at Jenga where we play the passing game and, you know, the creativity game and going to a totally different uh, environment where you're not going to enjoy and not going to have fun. So, um, you know, there's different each, each family here will have their own um, goals, of course, to play in college and where they go and stuff. So, um, again, here's the, the performance that we do, introduction, nurture, development, high performance, excellence, uh, transition squad. This is kind of what we're providing to our, uh, our clubs. We are, again, developing players, developing teams, but we are very proud of the achievements that we have uh, in such a short period, I'll say, because we're in the club. Again, 2013, so we're going to our ninth, ninth season. Uh, we won 10 state cups, and we're proud to, you know, win a regional uh, in 2015. Uh, and we're the first Connecticut club to win that since 1994. Uh, so nobody has won, and the pictures are coming along. Uh, on the boys and the girls that won the, this championship. So, again, we take pride on, on the wins as well it's not our main goal but it's 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 important to see our team succeeding our boys and girls um high school performance a lot of our players want to play in high school um and we've been getting a lot of great feedback on that 
I've been part on the girl side, Tiago has been part on the boy side. And we in first hand we can see our Jenga players, like especially for me when I was playing against Wally for uh, where our Jenga players were, or um, uh, Milfor, it was, uh, we got to defend them. So seeing the performance that those the boys and girls are putting on the field, um, you know, it's, it's, they, most of them are making varsity as a freshman and this show the commitment, the, um, you know, the parents and the players and the, our program to those players to succeed. So that's very important for their social life as well. Uh, once they come to a high school and they are succeeding in sport, I think it makes it easier for them to make friends. Uh, I think as a parent, we always concern about, you know, the income freshmen. That's my case the next year, next year you know. But once they in sport, once they involve in sport and they succeeding, it makes uh, makes our life much easier. Um, we talk about players, you know, going to college. Again, on the boys' side, we had two two teams or three teams graduating. I think it was in our 99, 2000, our 2001, 2002, and our 2003. Uh, the 2001, 2002 were together. Uh, because of their older ages, but out of three teams, those other players that are playing college now. It goes from D2, D3, um, you know, and D1 as well as Casper play. Um, so the exposure they have, uh, again, a lot of them, we've been one-on-one -on -one contacting one-on-one -on -one with the parents, with the players, uh, and making that transition very easy. Uh, some of them a little harder that we got to make phone calls, talk, but there's a process that each player is doing so to get there. Um, and it's, again, because of the, the success of those players, it's making it easier for us now to contact um, the colleges. You know, it's opening up um, a lot of doors for us. Uh, on the girls' side, again, we D2, D3, D1, um, playing from, you know, Southern Connecticut, from it's it, there's a ton of players now and now so this is two age groups only i think we had our 2001s in our 2000 2001 2002 which was one team in our 2002 and 2003 players um and as i saw tia tiana's um picture there she got recruited in a tough time where it was a uh, covid hit us and she want to go to Kentucky um, State University. And I'm like, how am I going to help you in Kentucky? She, Eastern Kentucky. And she put me in touch with her coach, which knew me because he was from Vermont. And he couldn't see her anymore. He only saw her video. Uh, she was a very fast, she is a very fast player. And um, so we had a conversation over the phone for about 20 minutes where I talk about her qualities as a player, as a person, the family, and he was able to give her 80% of her scholarship uh, without seeing her. But again, she put a nice video together where she showed her strength and he loved it. We contact over the phone. We made a transition. Of course, the family was in contact with them, uh, with him but we were able to help and um, our 2004 girls that are coming up and graduating i think we already have a committed players uh that you'll probably see coming up soon uh the commitments but out of 14 players eight are playing in college right now and few of them are still on the side if they play or the schools they're in touch but it's a big um course on the girls side there's a bigger numbers uh, of college scholarships available uh, and those are the list of our players right here and their pictures I see Aries here proud with our regional trophy back in 2015 and she's playing for Southern Abby Allen Gabby Paris playing for um, for UNH New Haven and all those girls Angie Olivia Duback uh, it's nice, nice to see those girls um, are succeeding. And like I said, the college recruitment, we put in the support more and more uh, to our players. Again, it's very important and parents, you understand that 
the coaches are not going to come and watch our games out of nowhere or our college showcase. It's got to be a communication between player, not even parents and coaches, between the player at that age to the coach that um, that she or he want to go to that school. So we put a list, you know, I think we did the steps here that we shared um, a couple weeks ago, but a list of the main schools that you want to go. Again, you don't want to go to school just because of soccer. You got to know what you want to study. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for us to reach out to the coach when you know your major, you know where you were going to go to study. And um, it's easy for us to, um, to support, especially talking to those coaches. Uh, there's it's IDs. There's a lot of IDs going there, um, going on on their schools. A lot of schools are using their their IDs to recruit. A lot of them are using just for uh, money grab. Uh, so we got to be very careful with this. Um, but if you go to an ID, you know, on the school that you like it, the coach will be able to see you. You already send out an email before you put it, him or her in touch with us. Uh, you copy me on the email. Uh, and we're doing all the, you know, the talk uh, so they know that you're coming from a strong club, you're coming from um, a strong team, and have our connection, you know, having our connections help you out. Uh, of course, with me playing on the national team this past year, uh, my connections, my networking um, opened up so much that we're able to get in a different way that was before. Uh, to those coaches. I think we have a little bit more respectful, we more respected by um, by the college coaches and by the... Um, uh, schools, especially for our players. You as a player or parents got to make your own decisions where your son or your daughter want to go because of financial or uh, geographic and... Um, I tell all the players now, go and watch the coach. You know, you don't want to be stuck there and not enjoying the style of playing, the way that that coach coaches, because it's a four, five-year relationship that you don't want to go. You don't want to be recruiting, play for one year and stop. Uh, and again, there's, you need to be a good player. You need to be a good kid uh, for them to recruit you. It's not where you play or what league you play. Uh, not only on games, videos, of course, we got to videotape our home v home games for 11 v 11, so our players can have that video to send to the coach. But we need to work together on that, and that's what I've been doing with the girls uh, 2004, our boys 2004. We don't have it, so next boys coming up will have the same um, same approach. Uh, going to those highlights, sending the highlights, going to the school, learning about the school, learning about the program, and making a decision. Uh, again, sometimes it's not even the money offer, uh, which is out there. We just need to get at the right time. On the um, recruitment process, nothing before junior year. On the boys and girls, the boys are even later. They are recruiting on the senior year, maybe the end of your junior year, because the boys are developing late. You know, the girls, when they are 16, they fully develop on their bodies, their speed. Uh, on the boys a little, you see them developing a little later. So there's different times for you to reach out as well. So our boys, you know, calm. There's the right time. It's a long, long process. Um, so keep hungry. Uh, enjoying the game. Um, and like I said, Jenga for life. Um, enjoy the game. You know, enjoy your friends that, that you're going to bring forever. The times that we spend together uh, and learn a lot of life lessons um, that will go with our programs. And we are proud to help the players to go through those problems, through those situations, so they learn um, they learn a lot. Again, my best moments as a player, uh, it comes from the young age when I remember we are friends together. So it's very important for this. Um, uh, so this will conclude our presentation. Um, let me see if I can get out here and um, go on a live screen. Uh, again, I think, again, sorry for being so long the presentation. Uh, I think we're close to an hour now. 
but it's important for us parents coaches players you know everybody involved in this environment this community to have one goal and work together it's um like i said it's not a sprint it's a marathon where we can achieve their goals together in a family environment respectful environment uh where our goal is for our players to um to succeed there are a lot of clubs that once it gets to uh, tryout times will be very vocal about it, very, and we, I would say we're constant working, you know, with our players, with our parents. Uh, we don't, we're not right 100%, but I think we've been more right than wrong and doing the right stuff. And we are the first ones to see if something's not working to change and to get better for our players. Uh, so again, if you have questions um, on our development plan, when our approach with the players, our coaching, uh, we are open to answer those questions. We are open to talk to you, especially um, when it's come decisions, you know, how it's going to be next year, how the team looks like, how it's going to be the competition. Uh, everything counts. Everything is valuable and we're here to answer and to help you out. Uh, of course, I'll post this on YouTube so you guys can watch more, go back, and any questions, reach out to uh, to the club. If you send an email to info, I-N-F-O, at jingfc.com, we'll go to Jessica so she can kind of deliver the message to whoever. Uh, is it for me, Rodrigo, JB, uh, anyone, or even the coaches, we can help out or go through your manager and we um, – we can answer those questions. If you, I didn't look at the questions. I, I just went back here. There might be some questions here. I can do some videos after and post it. Um, on Friday, this this incoming Friday, we're gonna have our spring season um, pizza party, our opening of the season at the complex. We're gonna bring some music. Um, we want the kids to come and enjoy, um, have a good time. I'm gonna have some little games there for them, but outside of the field in a way that parents and players can enjoy themselves. Uh, hopefully the weather will be a little better than uh, the last couple of days. And on May 10th, May 17th, we're going to come back with our banquet, our annual banquet, which we've been missing for a couple of years and uh, will be fun. But more information will be out there. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, if you're watching our live or you're going to watch later, uh, again, Jing FC, it's proud and uh, happy to have you uh, with us and develop the players. And we are working very hard to make this experience even better. So, again, thank you. Have a good night. And we'll see you at the soccer field soon. All right. Thank you, guys.